What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kelda Music, here on Diva Talk Tonight, the podcast show. Gosh, I have, like, so many podcast shows, so many projects going on. Thanks to Mace the Tableist, you know what I'm saying? Cut it up, music, you know what it is. Shout out to my girl, Nicole, you know, great production, we having fun. So, I want to introduce another guest. He's a really cool guy, he's talented. I met him on some just random shit at an event. <laughs> Because that's my life. So, uh, everyone, please welcome Mr. Fetty Yeti. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing today, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for coming. Yeah, I know you traveled, you know, kind of far from bit. here or whatever. But it works. You, you, you made it. Yeah. You sure. made it. <laughs> so, um, yes, you sent me uh, a link to your book, I think it was. Yeah. And I got a chance to read the synopsis. And right when I hit the words male clitoris, I said, oh, Lord, what the hell is this? What am I reading? <laughs> Something else? Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell us about, this is your, is this your only book that you've ever released? Uh, yes, yeah, it's the first book that I've published. Um, it's not the first book I've written, but uh, uh-huh. I'm working on the follow-up to it also. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is all you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, um, and the book is called uh, The Buna Complex. Mm-hmm. And it's the I'll guy. I'll figure out how to how to pronounce that. The, say it again. The Buna complex. The Buna complex. And what yeah. does that mean? That's what it's called. The male clitoris is I'm defining it as the Buna. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, um, it's the guide to the male clitoris. And so, okay, uh, what you read was introduction, which is available, you know, for people to read, check out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a good read. It's def- definitely informative. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's time to it's for the for the world to to really have better understanding of you know, what goes on. Mm-hmm. So give us a bit of a insight on the male clitoris. What, what do we need to know? What, what's so, I guess, important that we need to know about it? Well, it's written from the perspective uh, as a self-help guide as well as, you know, uh, uh, informational text. So, mm-hmm. you know, my hope is that it helps people relationships. Um, mm-hmm. I, I see, uh, I was doing a highest use analysis and, and one of the major, I think, benefits of knowing what it is and how it functions and so forth um, is that it can improve your ability to have children. You know, if mm. people are, are okay. not engaged in an appropriate way or whatever. One thing that I found through my research is that you have a much better chance of uh, engage, having pregnancy and all that, you know, if you engage in it, you know. So I mm-hmm. think uh, from that perspective, that's, that's kind of the, the major thing that I feel like. Uh, it would be beneficial for humankind to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting, interesting. And how long have you had this on your mind, like, to well, worry I, about it? Well, it took some time. I mean, obviously, it took some time to do the research, but um, mm-hmm. over time, I, I started to, to pay attention, um, and that's what the, the follow-up book is about, is that whole process. You know, it took years. Mm-hmm. So, um, But as I started to recognize and, 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 you know, seek understanding of certain, you know, relationships and things and people and so forth, I started recognizing that mm-hmm. it was there, impact on me that I was appreciating that Mm -hmm. I was missing and so I started you know digging deeper like you know so what is it that you know and and that game brought me to uh discovery you know what I'm saying where it's like we have uh our own uh points of stimulation that Mm -hmm. we don't exactly understand and so I go in depth about uh what is known Mm -hmm. and then you know where this research picks up at let me ask you, what are some of the health issues that you discuss in there? Um, well, I don't discuss health issues. I think I use a um, an approach where if I see a benefit to a certain sector of society, mm-hmm. I'll speak to that. So I, I talked about people maybe have an application for people who may have erectile dysfunction. Mm. So if you don't know... Mm-hmm. the causes and some of that kind of stuff you know if you have a better understanding of, of you know different points of stimulation maybe you you have you know mm-hmm. uh, better outcomes mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, so that was one um, but you know I also looked at people who may have high blood pressure or, or you know mm-hmm. issues like that like mm-hmm. you know in, in terms of asking people to go and explore this you know mm-hmm. um, you also have to take a, an approach where people are are taking a a healthy look at it and not, you know, become an obsessive and that kind of stuff. I'll talk about mm-hmm. that as well because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm hopeful that people don't 
don't create, uh, you know, pleasure houses. They specialize in stimulation of the boon or some type. Of, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that's that's not really yeah, the, yeah. The, the the desire. So really, mm -hmm. like I said before, um, the relationship enhancement is much better as a therapeutic kind of uh, thing where mm -hmm. you feel me, you have a better understanding of your partner and and you know. For, for ladies, I think... No, uh, like, know how to pleasure your partner better, in a way? Um, well, well, the or? thing, the approach that I took was dual pleasure. So it's not just, you know, okay. uh, do this to him or, or he do this to her. Mm -hmm. It's more of like you do a thing together. And um, based on the proximity... Um, you know, there are devices already on the market uh, mm -hmm. that could assist, you know, in that. Um, and I can also think of a few different applications where we can develop something. So, mm -hmm. you know... There's a couple of different um, different ways to approach that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any like um, what are, what are they called? Uh, I don't know researchers or just anybody that you studied from that you gained this information from. So I had a friend. Um, shout out to uh, uh, my boy Jonathan, um, who gave me some advice. He's a medical doctor. He calls himself a medical professional, so I respect that. Mm -hmm. um, and and he told me. He said, you know. As I said, what do I do about sources? I, you know, I was asking him because, you know, because this is not in my field. I'm an educator. It's different for, you know, uh, medical field. And he said, um, well, you'll be the source. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your ideas. It's your yeah. information. Yeah. You become cited, mm -hmm. you know. So I wasn't looking to cite anybody because for the most part, uh, you know, what was known <laughs> was already known. as like common knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I also learned a lot about publishing process and, and credit and, you know, payments, all that kind of stuff. All the different ways that uh, we, for medicine's sake, you know, we, we generally forego riches. And I've seen a lot of uh, African-American scientists uh, robbed of their ideas and creations and not given mm -hmm. proper credit and stuff like that. So um, it was important for me to document it first mm -hmm. so that, you know, we, we have our, our copyright date. Yeah, I was about to say. And therefore, copy, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, was nobody talking about this. <laughs> was nobody talking about this. I Googled it multiple times for months just to see if there had been any emerging research. Google mm -hmm. Scholar, everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Then um, I went to some anatomy books. And mm. I found uh, one key uh, photograph I was going to use. But I, I didn't want to go through all the reproductive rights reproduction rights of, of using the photograph. Mm -hmm. But it describes the whole uh, region, male organ region, and it has the Buna located, mm -hmm. but it's not labeled. So it hasn't been defined. Mm. So has um, everything else labeled? But it's that there, I, I can show it to you right now. You'd be like, so that's it? And, I, you know, literally it's in an anatomy book, mm -hmm. but it's the, the use is unknown. Mm -hmm. So have you explored physically yourself? Like, yeah. have you taken some of your own notes and how to... Please yeah. yourself uh, better, how she could please you better. And that was the process with my wife, just kind of engaging okay. in our regular routines and, you know, um, talking about it, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I talk a lot about communication. That's good. Be open the, about it. You have to. It's your partner. For, you know right. I mean? The need for clear and decisive communication about, you know, what you want, what you feel like, what you think, all of that, during, mm -hmm. before, after, all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, just through that process, you know, I, I went through some of all of that whole exploration. Again, mm -hmm. that is what the follow-up is a book is about, so I don't want to give too yeah, much away yeah. in terms of that process because um, yeah. there's, there's a lot, and it was, like I said, it took years, and, and mm -hmm. um, one thing uh, that, I, that I can say uh, is that, um, you know, I have a cousin who, uh, let me just tell you the story. I, I, was, I was looking at... I was sitting on the idea, thinking about it, and I was trying to figure out who to talk to about it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I asked one of my cousins, I said, hey, uh, why, why do you think, because I noticed in my family, mm -hmm. there are a lot of my family members that like heavier set women. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, they all kind of nicknames for people that like heavier set women. But mm -hmm. I was asking him, I was like, bro, why do you think it is that we like, we like that? And he was like, it's just more cushion for the pushing. And so I thought about it, and then I applied that to the research and, and was mm. like, that is, you know, it's valid. So mm -hmm. that's in the book also. I included that because that was part of, uh, it, it was like, a, it helped me turn a corner mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, what I was thinking, what where I was, my approach to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, further defining it for people. Mm, okay, okay. And do you plan on doing more outside of this, like, I don't know, like talking, going to, you know, events yeah, and talking I'm, I'm, about this. Like, 
you know, I have my because uh, you said my no reservations. Doing it, so it's right, like, I have my you know reservations I mean? about it. Yeah. Um, based on, because I had to go through you know like patent law and all that kind of stuff, and um, like I don't want to go do trade shows, you know, where I'm standing trying to promote. Yeah, and it's, you know, no, no, I don't do that. But um, you mm -hmm. know, giving talks and, and interviews stuff like that, I'm definitely down to do that um, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's necessary. I think also just as people are further exploring and developing. Um, the ideas like I want to I want to know like even if mm -hmm. it's not a matter of, of me being involved like if uh, you know a university was deciding to do a study you know yeah 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 you know, I don't need to know how the hundred million thousand dicks work I'm good you yeah. know I mm -hmm. don't know the I'm cool I, I just you know for me it's the information yeah if I put the plant to see you you figure all the rest of it out mm -hmm. you know I'm not mm -hmm. going you know I'm not about that mm -hmm. so um like I, I would like to see more things done and, i think you should um, do a documentary that would be nice hmm. that Maybe. would be nice I don't, I don't know it's just for me like just knowing they could show in like sex ed sex ed classes <sighs> health classes no, i think i think it would only like i think it would serve as an instructional text in a yeah, form, yeah. formative text like you know because really like other people obviously over time you know mm -hmm. uh, one thing i've done and figured out in terms of the research it takes time for some new ideas a lot of times to take hold and there are discoveries yeah. that have taken two, three, five, ten years mm -hmm. before people, you know, really, really start using them or ratcheting up mm -hmm. their, uh, you know, their application. So um, I'm not hopeful that it all, you know, is worked out in front of me. I'm not tripping. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm really, for me, in terms of uh, for humanity's sake, I want to see all the different ways, all the different applications, you know, um, mm -hmm. that it, it is impacting, you know, different industries and so forth. So. Um, yeah, I got concerns about that, too, because, you know, um, it's like with all things new, fresh ideas or whatever, um, you know, regardless of your uh, your approach, regardless of your intention, mm -hmm. um, like you look at legislative intent and laws, the same thing. Like, you know, you you had all the best intentions, but the way it was carried out when it hit the ground was different. So mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, bad people do things and, and you can't control, you know, any of that stuff. And so, you know, I didn't spend a lot of energy trying to uh, figure out how to limit it. Um, I think for me it was like trying to really explore and, and, and you know, kind of <laughs> conjugate what I knew already and, and bring, you know, all the different things kind of mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. So that's been effective. So I was working out. And what's like the main message that you're trying to get through with this book? What do you really want I don't know that, to know? Yeah, I don't know that there's a message. Like I said, <laughs> it's informational text. So like, you know, it would be like getting a message from the dictionary. So right, it's not right. really, it's not to me sort of message connected or connected to a movement like that per se. Um, but it's really mostly, like I said, as a guide, um, it, it lays the groundwork for how we, you know, how we engage, how we do, you know, um, mm -hmm. how we approach, you know, uh, the whole process mm -hmm. of, of sexual relations. And even, you know, in, in terms of talking to people, like, you know, they talk about in relationships, the the action starts long before, you know, you're actually in the act, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it just gives you more ways to foreplay and, and, and so forth. So, you mm -hmm. know, I, I would think that... Um, you know, for people um, who are looking for better understanding, deeper understanding, uh, greater commitment to, you know, uh, uh, appl applying, you know, their their mm -hmm. interests and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. there are some people who are interested from a scientific standpoint yeah, yeah, who might, you know, really um, see, you know, for a specific target audience or a certain target audiences, different applications that I haven't considered or things that I might have mentioned in passing because there are, you mm -hmm. know, multiple ideas that I talk about. And I'm saying, you know, this is something that deserves, um, you know, additional study, you mm -hmm. know, by people who are specialized here. Um, I'm not, and if I'm not qualified to speak on it, I can think about it and say, hey, what if, you know, mm -hmm. but for the people who are actually in that vein, doing that work all the time, I mm -hmm. think the, the most respectful thing is to let them do that part of the work. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it's really, it's really interesting that you, you know, bring this out to the forefront to the public, because like you said, it's information that people are unaware of, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you're making mm -hmm. them aware of it. Mm -hmm. So I, what I really wanted to ask you to, uh, just by doing your own research and understanding this, have you found a certain sex position that you liked now because of this? You know the funny thing I can I can tell you too. Uh, missionary is actually perfect for it mm -hmm. uh, because that's you know I don't want to say what, how it was intended or whatever, but that's you know it's kind of the natural approach to it I would say. Um, but uh, hmm, I don't want to give away too much content that's in the book. But mm -hmm. one of the uh, 
feature ways that I, I think is um, where where it applies is is in the uh, the scissors position. Mm -hmm. um, the scissors position. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I never tried that position before. I was hopeful that you were familiar, so we could just pin past that and keep it moving. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Wait, so the scissors position. Yeah. Okay. Wait. No, okay. Right? Yeah, okay. Uh, the, the scissors position. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yes. that um that was kind of the thing where I felt um between those two. Mm -hmm. Um for for initial, I think uh like for people who are are exploring it for the first time, missionary probably be suggested just so that people can recognize their own regular kind mm -hmm. of you know process through the the whole thing mm -hmm. and then they'll know when something's different mm -hmm. then Ooh. do it another way and then you know kind of figure out what you like or whatever i knew i do know that doggy style is not conducive okay why is that just uh just space ways, position just space or? just space. all i can say is space it's not like it's just it's not the same thing mm, interesting wow <laughs> No, this is this is pretty this is pretty cool information, you know. Like I said, anything goes on this show, so that's why you're here. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and is that Diamond? What's up, Diamond? Hey. Yes. This is Fetty Yeti. This is my co-host Diamond. Nice to meet nice you, Fetty Yeti. Nice to yes, meet you. Yes, we were just talking about his book. Uh, say the name for me again. The Buna Complex. Oh, the Buna Complex. Yeah, and it has a Facebook group too, so you can always go there and and you know look at uh, different posts and, and advertisements and so forth. And it's under the same you can get name? samples. Yeah. B U N A. Okay. Complex. Oh Bona. Buna. Oh, it's pronounced Buna. B U N A. Oh Buna. Okay. Buna. Buna. <laughs> Does that mean anything in particular? <laughs> um Did we already so, discuss that? Nah, sorry. nah. It, <laughs> but no we we could go ahead. Um it's a nonsensical word, but uh it's combination but naked. Oh. So the first half and yeah. Okay. So booming. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> so I guess have you um, sold many copies? Is it actually released online? Yeah, it's, it's available. It's an ebook format only, and I, uh, my business model, as you know, it makes money. I'll provide it different ways, new editions. I'll obviously get that. Uh, Are you on Amazon? That yet? photograph reproduced. Yeah, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, mm -hmm. The baby has a book sh book store um so mm -hmm. it's, it's you know you can find it mm -hmm. um but like i said I, I think the easiest thing is going through the facebook group because i've posted the links there multiple and then um mm -hmm. also um if you follow fetty yeti on any uh, mm -hmm. uh app you know it'll be there too oh, okay okay so you guys look that up you know what i'm saying <laughs> so you can educate yourselves a little bit more all right <laughs> So I wanted to get into another topic here. I want to talk about COVID. COVID, COVID. <laughs> Diamond, how's COVID affecting your life right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> because you're a busy body like me. It's like. <laughs> right? Like, it's trying to steal the show, for sure. Like, yeah. And I don't know if anybody got that, that alert this morning. No, what? what? Or if you no, did, they've been sending the alert. You guys got the alert? I didn't get it's no like alert. A, it's like an Amber Alert to come on that same emergency broadcast system. Really? Saying what? That COVID like... Stay home. Stay home? Holy shit. Yeah. Where are we? <laughs> Not at home. But that's the same thing my mama said. She was like, I heard it go off, but I just didn't look. And I said... And that's what a lot of people probably did. Mm -hmm. They heard it, and it was like, that's nothing. Mm, 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 mm. That's nothing. You know? Like... Yeah, yeah, just another alert. <laughs> just another alert, you know, another boop. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. What about you, Fetty? How has COVID affected your life? You know, from being a father, from being a businessman, right. writer. Well, people, everybody's at home. So, yeah. you know, people had to adjust. And I think it's just been an adjustment for everybody. Yeah. And um, it's not comfortable. It's not, you know, the best case scenario. But, you know, you wake up every day, do more of what you did yesterday. It still yeah. works until they, you know, yeah. get enough people vaccinated or, or whatever they got to do to, you mm -hmm. know, make it sort of safer for people mm -hmm. but uh i don't you know i don't feel like it, it was any less safe than it was before right i right. think that people just have more awareness because you could catch the flu from people you yeah know, before as well so that's you know. right so um yeah like i said it's i've already had um uh, an interest in you know i was like a hypochondriac so you know i was trying to that keep my like hands me. clean and <laughs> you 
know, stay away from people and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah. I was glad to wear a mask. Yeah. Y'all fell into my hands with the mask. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was like, I don't have none, but. I just feel funny wearing a mask. But you should wear your mask. Always wear your mask. But it's just like, <laughs> depending on what kind of mask you have. Like, I had, like, the doctor's looking mask. Oh, yeah. And one day, like, I sneezed in it, and I walked in the store, <laughs> and this woman, she was like, yeah, she was like, you're all wet around your mouth. <laughs> you didn't clean it off? I didn't, you didn't feel think nothing about it? on there. Yeah, I didn't think about it, and I'm like, well, I have a mask, you know, whatever. And she was like, yeah, she's like, you're wet all around your mouth, your nose, <laughs> yeah, no. like a baby. No. I'm like, see, see, God damn it, see, look, that's why I got, wait, I got, I got these kind of masks now. This one. Eh. Okay. You got some like this? No, I just got a regular mask. You just got a regular like mask? Just, you know. Well, you got some like this? I don't yeah. need nothing specialized. Just, well, you know. I, I need mine specialized. Cause... I don't have one like that, but I do got one that got like the little like, like whatever microbial like fibers. It's yeah, yeah. To, I got the mask that's supposed to be. Antimicrobial mask. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> So, I got those like, kind too, but yeah, no, I, I mean, just I'd rather just have a regular mask. My mask is this though. It'll that's your mask, six, six feet. feet. Step back, step back. Oh yeah, you. And I, you know, I need like, nine feet to put really. On my face. Just keep yourself back there. Yeah, yeah you know what's funny? I went to the doctors, and that mask that I came in with, they were like, "No, you need to use one of our masks." They're like, "That mask is is dangerous." What? They're like, "We we don't know what you might be spreading." Yeah. Wow. You're only supposed to use them once or twice. That's true. Or you or these ones you could wash. I got like six or seven. Just keep washing them. Just yeah, that's stupid. Like, you know, you know, in rotation, mask like your game underwear, just you stepped know? up. Socks and underwear, you wash them. <laughs> I know, I'm right? laundry your towels. I'm just it's, yeah. Socks I mean, and drawers. There are people who you know wear an outfit and then throw it away. Right. But right. I mean, the mask is different. It's not gonna cost the same. You know, if you buy a pack of a hundred, you know. It's okay to throw them away. Well, no, no, the reusable ones, the ones that are like the doctor, yeah, yeah, throw them away. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah, you got, you know, the fashionable ones, ones it, like I said, I got, mine is a fashionable one with the micro cobra that word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever the fucking term is. Right. That so is you got to keep I, it clean. Right. So I like wash it yeah. every day. You'll stop but I have like <laughs> five different ones that go in rotation. You didn't have a mask on when you came in. Oh, I did. Oh. You were turned away from me when oh, I walked oh, in. Oh, okay. oh, see? I walked past and I took see, it I don't, I don't make no bones <laughs> about it. I'll come all in your house, be in the kitchen, still got my mask on. Like, I, good. I That's just don't good. do it. Because don't you're not a part of my pod. No, no, I know. Right. You feel and me? so you definitely Different should come groups. to my house with your pot, with your mask on. Because I don't know where you've been. You yeah, don't I'm know not, where I'm I've not, been. Right. I'm wearing a mask everywhere I go. Yeah. I was just telling uh, my folks that like on Thanksgiving, my mom turned me away. She was like, do not come over my house. I was like, but it's Thanksgiving. And my dad, he's just so like, man, don't listen to your mom. Come on over, man. Fuck all that. You know what I mean? But my mom, she was like, no, I will have the door locked. I will leave you a plate outside. I'm like, I'm not driving an hour to come get some oh box my macaroni. and. <laughs> uh, my family been tripping since Memorial Day. They started yeah. canceling stuff. I had a big oh, really? family. We always do a lot of stuff. And stuff just started getting canceled. What about going to parks and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like, What you going to do at the park? Barbecue. Barbecue brings a couple yeah, with your 40. Family, you know, yeah, with Then they, you they can definitely distance yourself. Yeah, yeah. That, that don't stop it. That right. don't stop it. You, know, yeah. you, can, you can do that at home. But, you yeah. know, my thing, like, I'm, I'm looking at the word essential. So, you yeah. know, it's got to be essential for me. If I, can, if I can feel like I don't need it, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's just, it's just a matter of life and death. Right, it right. depends. You know your pre-existing conditions, so you feel me? <laughs> you, hey, gotta, man. you might be cool. You might you might have had to get a defibrillator, cool. defibrillator when you was young, so you never know what your situation is, whatever, that's what's what scary. other people's situation is. Yeah, yeah, that's what's scary, and that's why. That's I, not what's scary. What's scary is the vaccine. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Just because. Did you see the video of, of the lady who took the vaccine? She passed out on camera. <gasps> no, uh-huh. but I was looking for something uh-huh. like that. I, I wanted Watch to it. find. You guys seen it? You guys seen it? That's bad for yep. business. That's bad for business. Yeah, they I put, think they shot her with the vaccine, and then uh, the news talked to her. They're like, "So how do you feel?" She was like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And she kept talking, and she was like, "I'm dizzy," and, and then she walked away, and then she just collapsed. Like, that's wow. bad. That's bad. That's bad. Was that on CNN? You, when they were be, doing all the vaccinations, I think so. Set, like, I think four so. days ago, I think so. Yeah, but she straight up passed out. Damn. Yeah, so yeah. all of, all of the bad things that happened, um, they should have been able to get some of that worked out before yeah. releasing the vaccine. But at the same time, like you know, you got to kind of 
it's almost like a cost benefit analysis. It's like we rush yeah. it out now, we might be able to save some lives. So it's worth rushing it. You know, even though if you know you giving it to people who didn't get get it, because I would be pissed. Like all this time, you think about it, COVID mm -hmm. hit. You say this time last year. Mm -hmm. So for a year, I've been ducking and dodging it. I walked up to your ass with a needle. You gave it to me. And now I got another problem we didn't even discuss. Right. You feel me? So that's the hard part. Just like me. when you take a flu shot, right? Like they say. Don't do the flu shot. I had two flu shots in my life. I get a flu shot like every year. Lucky Nothing you. Ever happens to me. Really? Yeah. Mm. But like people tell me they get sick. They get a cold. They feel worse than before. They get the flu. You're well, lucky. It's all in your DNA. You're lucky, yeah. It's all some in the people, proteins in your that's body. That's not cool. And, amino, and amino acids. How you say this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and amino acids. Yeah, and amino acids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy. So, well, what are you guys going to do when they say you have to take the vaccine or else they're going to fine you? Because I heard... Fine me? Yeah. There's a lot of different fine. things. People are saying... I think I read an article that said that your employer can you know, enforce you having to take it, like make it mandatory oh, for you to take so it. Oh, ah, yeah. that's so, pretty smart. Oh, so, you know, so you're going to lose your job, job if you don't <laughs> get the vaccination? That's the yeah. tough, that's tough stuff. It's like you taking know, a drug you gotta, test. You're going to take this drug test. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I already got the job. How are you, you going to make me take a vaccine after I got the job already? If you make me take it as a condition of employment, that's different. Like you do the TB test, whatever. All right. Maybe you got to take a COVID test before you get a job or whatever. But they tell you to take a vaccine, that's a whole other thing. Cause that's that vaccine gonna be with you for life. You might yeah. get fired in three months. And it's like, well, damn. You feel me? Right. Yeah. 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 And the side effects of that vaccine, like she said, the lady that's what passed I'm out. They were talking about five years from now. Paralysis. You know, and they got stuff that's saying. Uh, I'm listening to the language in the side effects. They're talking about a uh, newer worsening mm -hmm. symptoms. Now, mm -hmm. how am I gonna have new symptoms? And we treating something. You know what I'm saying? So that's right, yeah. that's always a thing. I've always been leery of stuff. Yeah, we're with the treating something side we don't effects. even have yet. <laughs> right? How about that? Yet. Well, we don't I've even avoided have it. getting it on my own, and now you unwilling to let me continue on my own. So that's mm -hmm. the hard part. Like mm -hmm. I said, um, I was willing to take it though, you know, for specific reasons. But um, you know, if it's not again essential. Mm -hmm. So wait, what are you going to do if your job says you have to take it? I mean, I'm, I would take it. I, I would, I would take would it in take the interest, it? yeah, in the interest of of protecting your coworkers. If, you know, yeah, it's yeah, respectful no, to take smart, it, but you know if you mean? don't have to, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to. You know, I don't see that again as being essential. You know, if there's some people who are waiting for the vaccine, it it falls to you, and you don't want it, or you know, shit, don't take it. You know, let somebody who want to get it. You feel me? Because uh, to me, it's you know, I'm, I'm gonna put it off. Let me just put it that way. Because I'm, I'm. You feel me? Yeah. I'm already hard to get close to. So. Not and everybody that I talked to, everybody said the same thing. I'm not taking no vaccine. Like. Well, it's. I think being an anti-vaxer is a different thing like i'm not taking any vaccine at all it's a different thing that i'm not taking that vaccine right okay because okay. if you think about it and I, I looked at i believe three studies uh moderna pfizer and i think in the uk they developed one and they had 85 90 and 95 percent effective rates which one are you taking 95 the 95 percent effective rate why are they still making that other shit right like, you don't come out with 75 and you 65 got, Choose which one you want. One's not viable because it only has 55% right. chance. Of, well, of course. It's like taking a birth control test and it says 88% effective. Right. And then you got something that's 99. <laughs> right. You got something that's 99. Yeah. So that's the thing. You or know? saying, uh, or how some of these restaurants are like 100% beef. Well, what's, okay. If Shouldn't it's have not to 100, say that. Right, right. If it's <laughs> not 100%, then what's the rest? <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um. That that's crazy. Like, ha, have they released uh, any besides what I told you guys? Has have they professionally like or officially released the vaccine anywhere? They sent it everywhere. Like but, like but like our doctors the, contact your hospital. No, the doctors are say, contacting hey. doctors. They're giving it to each other. They're not giving it to you yet. Yeah, they're not the giving it to me nurses. yet. Yeah, they're giving the it to the people who are treatment. Staff. Are they gonna practice on animals? Practice? No, no, all they're that's practicing over. Practicing on people. All that's over. They're and now they're doing. It's the only real, going to people. It's and they're the treating it like it's important. So oh, it's like, God. this is a $1,500 shot, and we can make sure we get you all this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you feel me, that's how they're approaching it. They don't want to waste a drop. Yeah. So, you know, ain't no animals getting it no more. 
Oh, that's over. That's a waste. They they had three month period where that was <laughs> like you know mm -hmm. they tried on the animals for the next three weeks, then they holla at you. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't tell you what happened to the animals. Yep, they showed they it. just they said ninety percent effective rate, ninety five percent, whatever. So yeah. that's how they get you. That's how they oh, get you. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I want to talk about something else now that we're in a pandemic and we are staying home about ninety percent of the time. Um, dieting, <clears throat> which is something that I've discussed with a lot of people. I went to my doctor. And, you know, I went for, like, a regular checkup, whatever. And I didn't even pay no attention, but, you know, I stood on the scale, whatever. And then he was like, you gained 12 pounds. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, and? So? I said, we're in a damn pandemic. You damn right I'm eating every day. Shit. Like, and he was like, well, just because we're in a pandemic doesn't necessarily mean you have to gain weight. You know, you should be cooking healthy, you know, meals at home. I said, not everybody could do that. And everybody has a time to do that. You know what I mean? So, are you maintaining your weight, or how are you going about? No, I'm I'm the same size I've been, and uh, I don't. I think my approach to food is not the same as other people. I've been a vegan. Oh, you're veg a vegan. Vegetarian. Not now, no. Oh. Um, I was though, and you were, and at so one point. yeah, the way I approach food is I'm I'm selective, if nothing else. Uh -huh. So um, I don't see all that fluctuation. I wouldn't eat the shit anyway. Well, did you pick but, out, at least on Thanksgiving? Did you have like hmm? turkey? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I got, I don't look at it as pigging out. I ate again, but I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I don't, I don't eat to be, you know, to get full. I just eat to make sure I got some of everything, whatever. And yeah, I'm cool. yeah. So you got Sunday um, dinners too? Y'all be doing? Yeah, Sunday no, dinners? I, I eat, but I'm yeah. just saying that you know. Um, I don't feel like, like, the my results not typical. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm not. I'm not. I didn't make a lot of changes. I didn't feel like yeah. I needed to make a lot of changes or whatever. Yeah. The stuff I was eating was still available, um, but you and it was feel working. Like the urge to eat when you're bored or anything like that. Like you just. Well, people, I, I eat all the time. Yeah. So I just like, I'm just eating healthier stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The more you eat, you you know, that doesn't change. Like yeah. you don't you don't necessarily get to the point where you uh, eating more because of you know any particular reason you know right right like i'm in the house so i'm gonna eat like i'll be fat that just didn't happen to you yeah that's just <laughs> results are not I'm typical like, that's what i'm saying like you feel me because like, right, and some for some people they were used to eating twice a day they're eating five or six times a day now it's yeah. different um i was well, already snacking you, so you know. you. <laughs> Man, i'm starting to feel out <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> no, I, I do notice, though, like, every day, I'm always, right when I wake up, was for breakfast. Eggs, bacon, potatoes, was for Ooh, lunch. <laughs> was for lunch. Sandwich, chips. What, what, you eating potatoes for breakfast? Oh, you know, yeah. I'm every day? to come over there. Like, every other day. Oh, no. I have potatoes once a month. every day. I, you were every day eating a full-ass breakfast. <laughs> I can't help it. And I love uh, breakfast. You, breakfast is my favorite. Yeah, but you got to pick and choose, you know, if you're going to win with breakfast. Well, here's the thing. I'll eat a big breakfast, and then I'll skip lunch, and then for dinner, I'll eat, like, a light dinner. And I, I walk 30 minutes a day. Well, that probably really doesn't I'm, matter. Hey, I'm not judging nobody. <laughs> Do your thing. Just... But it, it is hard, I'll say, you know, during the pandemic, because... Usually I'm out at the clubs, I'm out doing oh, yeah. events and stuff, I'm active, and I'm sure you were, you were too. But now that, you know, you're stuck in the household, it's like you can't do much moving around, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You up there chilling but, watching Netflix But that's the shit. thing, you know, if you buy all unhealthy food, then you yeah. have unhealthy choices available all the time. So that's I figured true. if I'm going to be home. I'm addicted to those White Castle burgers. See, you shouldn't buy White Castle <laughs> Burger ingredients. You should definitely not eat that crap. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm addicted to those. Yeah, so, nah, see, that's the thing. If you buy healthy food, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if you get yourself a couple of snacks you like if you're going to just splurge and eat something. Your Twinkies yeah. your thing, get you some Twinkies. Right, but right, right. get you some carrot sticks or celery or, or some crackers or, you know, soups or something like that, whatever, mm -hmm. something lighter so that if you want a snack, um, you're not constantly running the cookies. You're mm -hmm. not constantly running the soda or whatever. You know, if you right. fill your house up with soda and cookies, and expect to lose weight or maintain weight, that's not going to happen. But what about uh, counting your calories? You can eat like a whole Depends. pack of Oreos for breakfast, and if, it, and if that's like 500. Yeah, but you, you need specific kinds of calories. You can't just have all, you know, uh -huh. sugar 
yeah. and then say, yeah, I had 500 well, yeah, calories. Well, yeah, now we're talking about a different situation. Sugar. You're talking about sugar now, so that's, well, that, yeah. That's what your calories yeah. coming from, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, if you, because you said, you said cookies, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, but you can get calories from sugar, you can get calories from uh, other sweeteners, natural sugar, you know, yeah. so it just no, depends. That's true. It that's just true. depends. Yeah, like now, um, like after I eat breakfast, I'll try to have like a cup of fruit afterwards. If I if I have like um, that, uh, what is it, sweet tooth? Right. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you gotta have some options because if your go to is a Snicker bar, then you know you're gonna start looking like a Snicker bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. old Snicker bar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what do you eat on a daily basis? Like, what's your breakfast looking like? Uh, I'm, man, I'm in love with. Uh, I know what her breakfast. Shout is. out, shout out to Lynn and Lou's. Uh, it's a restaurant <laughs> on uh, Grand Avenue in Oakland. I stole their recipe. They have a an omelet they make. It's um. Ooh, it's what got city? Lynn and Lou's, and uh, you said what's in it? No, what city? Oh, it's in Oakland. Yeah, it's right on Grand Avenue. Wait, it's called Lynn and Lou's. Uh, it's across the street from the Weight Watchers and Domino's. Ah, oh. <laughs> you said a little restaurant you ever seen on the corner? Yeah, yes. I have seen. So they make an omelet with um. Provolone cheese, Ooh. green onions, and chicken apple sausage. Ooh, that's I've been eating good. that every day for the last two weeks. <laughs> Damn, that sounds so good. Just with a piece of toast. So that and a piece of toast. I'm like, all right, that's enough. So the omelet and a piece of toast. Yeah. So how's that chicken apple sausage? Is that any good? Like how? Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. You better get you some. So, right. Oh, wow. Well. Better get you right. some, girl. Yeah. So I was a vegan, and I went back to eating chicken and fish. So I eat seafood and I eat chicken. I don't eat beef or pork. Is that still. a um, what's the name for that? Because there's is that that's not a pescatarian. That they got all kind of names for yeah. it. Uh, I don't eat beef and pork. It's a lot faster when you say it like that versus you know whichever term. And then oh well, I had I had some milk though. So you feel me? <laughs> like, <laughs> like keep it simple. Yeah. I don't eat beef. I don't eat pork. I don't eat drink milk. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know. Right, right. What about you, Dominic? What, what's your um? I don't Get have down, no okay. regimen. You I just don't. work out hard. That's what you do. What? <laughs> Y'all who know me know I don't work out. <laughs> I don't eat healthy. You diet a lot. You were talking about the lemon diet, lemon lemon juicing. Okay, yeah. I've done that a few times. <laughs> You've done a lemon juice diet? Uh-huh, lemon cleanse, lemonade cleanse. Oh, well, cleanse is different. That's a shorter term. You Diet is well, like, you know, Yeah, but it was for like 21 days. That's weeks. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Yeah. So what, tell me what today looked like with the lemon. Oh, today is regular. Not today. I'm just saying the regular oh. okay, with the so lemon you, juice. You're, um, so you're cleansing your everything. So you're only drinking this lemonade concoction and water. Mm -hmm. You're not intaking no type of food, no type of sugars, no type of anything outside of this water and this lemonade oh, concoction. <laughs> How much you get and how often you drink it? You. Whenever you feel thirsty or hungry. When you're thirsty, you drink your water. If you're hungry, you drink your lemonade concoction. Because the mm -hmm. lemonade concoction has all of the vitamins and proteins and things that you need. Really? Are you sure? Do, or are you, do, you just, do you see the That's air, what they told you. Should I put it across that's my head? That's what they told you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says. Woke Radio the, said, just put the lemon <laughs> concoction in place of your meals and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it did um, work, though. It did. It did. And I, I, I would suggest it for anyone who is, like, very obese and very overweight because it would help you um, regain your metabolism. Mm. It would help you restart whatever you're trying to do as far as, like, being a vegetarian. Is this a diet a that vegan. you developed or you found it somewhere? Oh, I found it somewhere. Yeah, no, this I is what Beyonce it. had did yeah. after fighting temptations to be prepared for the next move that she was doing or mm -hmm. something like that. Or yep. So you, you got guys, the diet from Beyonce. Tell Kelda where, where y'all seen this, this diet at right. first, okay? Yeah, no, but, I, I've heard of it. On Instagram, <laughs> they talk about it, like girls. If it's, it's the really Beyonce good, it's diet, it colon, must work. It, it, it's a really deep cleanse. Like, you be clean. Okay. It gets you prepared for whatever diet you're going to do. So, like, it doesn't okay. have to be 21 days. It could be five, be 14. More like five or two, you know? You know, yeah, it don't have to be a whole Have you seen Beyonce? Days. I have. There wasn't no five-day cleanse. Well, I'm, I did 21, so hello, and I wasn't I wasn't always this small, and I this wasn't super small. big either. Right, you were never that big. Either. But, okay. you know, I got really small to where people were like, are you okay? She, no, she got small. She got really small. Are you doing drugs? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? No. 
I didn't even notice it. Because I would wear baggy pants and sweats and, like, just be regular. And then one day, I put on a swimsuit after hearing people say, you got a big old head, but nobody, like. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? And I put on this. Post a picture in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> right. If anybody got a picture. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I put on this swimsuit and was like, oh, my God. I don't have no booty. I don't have no, I got to I got to eat. <laughs> and it wasn't That's a that good and it wasn't that I wasn't eating at this point. I was totally eating. It just that the cleanse had literally like shed everything off me and I didn't even notice it. Wow. It just happened. Literally overnight. But like like the said, 21 you weren't days eating anything. You weren't eating anything. Right. But the 21 days I was totally normal size. I was the same size I started. And then after the 21 days is when things just started shedding off of me as people was like you're mm. getting smaller every day that mm. I see you. And I was like, what? Were you, like, shitting a lot? Not to be so bold, <laughs> right. real talk. Like, so a work. part of the cleanse is also to take, um, what do you call them? The little teas that help you go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Um, you do Ooh, a... Tea. Right. Shit That's tea. what you call it? Because you know that's what we call it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what... You gonna take that boo-boo tea? <laughs> that toilet tea, y'all? Uh, <laughs> we... I'm sure it has a real name, y'all. I'm sure it does. But, yeah, so. Detox. And yeah. you would take a salt, salt water flush, which is you drinking sea salt water. Salt water, water flush. Mm-hmm. Y'all yes, had it, trouble with my content. It's flushing Ooh, everything out of you. <laughs> she talking about sea salt Man, I'm water. telling you. And then I just heard this new thing. Yeah. Where you detox your body from the outside in by giving yourself a sea salt bath. Oh, Man, okay. I'm ready to do that one. This pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> People to turn into estheticians and shit. Right. No, they oh, did. Going to Dietitians. Shit. Man, looks, I need right, somebody to stretch. It's like you putting salt on a you, slug or a snail and they shrivel up. Except for they dead, you alive. Right. <laughs> exactly. I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's probably how it's working on your body. That's probably, you're in yeah. the tub and you're like, and it's like taking you gotta, all the You got to have the science <laughs> on it anyway before you start doing it. Don't just start, you know, 30-day lemon water <laughs> meal replacement right. plan. No, I totally did my research, and I suggest that y'all do too before you start it. Are you saying it might mess up like your organs, like your kidneys or liver? or? Again, you know I your mean, pre-existing yeah. conditions. Some people got know. more at stake than other people so you know mm-hmm. if you need a, a full diet where you can really right. get down and you know mm-hmm. don't go on some you know aspirin regimen without consulting your doctor that's the best advice i was think i ever exactly. seen exactly yeah so definitely. start or stop nothing without asking your doctor if you want to do that it's cool if it works yeah i'm sure beyonce wasn't winging it right she had a uh, coach as well. You better call her coach. Be trying to solve her. She put it on Instagram Y'all like call this. Her coach. Call her coach. I didn't have a coach, but I did my research though. <laughs> and See. I'm still here. Yeah. No, I didn't do my research, and my mom gave me this this uh, slim tea that she got from Walgreens. <laughs> And I remember I couldn't stop shitting. It was bad. <laughs> Wait, I feel like that's the name of the tea. It was bad. <laughs> I couldn't about, stop when, shitting. I didn't, when I didn't have to shit, I still, my body was like, you got to shit. So, <laughs> you was cleansing. Right. And all my, and I had a show that night, too. One way or another, she was cleansing. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. And then, you know, I, I uh, it was over at one point. And, uh, <laughs> Did you have a stomp sequence when you had the shit <laughs> while you was performing? Oh. Like, while you were performing, you got it. No. No, no, no. Trying to no. hold it. Was, it. <laughs> it was done, but it was funny. By 8 o'clock, we went to the event, and I remember I had a drink, chilling. I was like, I feel great. <laughs> but the next day, though, I still went to the doctor. You got to diet, diet in the off-season. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Timing is everything, y'all. And the next day, I went to the doctor, and he was like, you know what? Don't do those teas and diet pills. He's like, if you want to lose weight, work out and eat right. He was like, don't do any of that shit. Cause it, it got, I, I don't, I don't want to get too graphic, but it got, it got bad for me. Where I thought, I, I thought I almost had to be rushed to the hospital. I just couldn't stop shitting. Stop, oh it, stop right there, stop right there, freeze, just freeze. <laughs> Hell, oh my God. never again, never again, people, never again. Man, you told the story. We got it now. Yes, yes, <laughs> we got it now. Hell no. But it's um, something for everybody yeah. out there, y'all. Yes, yes. <laughs> So now, were you vegetarian as well, or were you just vegan at one point? Um, 
it was gradual. The difference between the two. It was gradual. Um, the same way, like now, I don't eat beef or pork or whatever. I started like that too. Like I just stopped eating pork, and then I stopped eating beef, mm -hmm. and then uh, chicken and poultry, then seafood, then food additives, and then mm -hmm. you know stuff. So it was like you know, yeah, really getting into like artificial flavorings and colors yeah. and all of that. All yeah. that stuff is made out of something. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. key to find out what it's made out of and then do you want to eat that. Right. So, you know, make your decision. Have an informed, make some informed choice, mm -hmm. you know, once you do the research. The research, the actual research. Mm -hmm. Don't ask Beyonce. <laughs> she, no, she. I didn't ask They're down with a plant-based diet, too, from what I read. Um, I didn't. But you can't just start a plant-based diet. The mistake I th think I keep seeing is people keep trying to say, I'm going to start a plant-based diet on Sunday. And you can't, you can't just do that. You can't just do that. Your body at some point is going to ask you where that juice go. Where's the wine you was giving me? Where's my, you know, all the different stuff that you want uh, out of habit. The Twinkie, you feel me? You, you got to you gotta treat yourself at some point with something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you just try to go cold turkey, I'm just going to be a, you know, live a plant-based diet on my 30-day juice cleansing. Seven days from now, you're going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to be in the house, miserable, you're going to be hungry, losing weight, it's going to be food on the shelves, people are not going to understand what's going on. Yeah, well, I was, um, I was vegan for nine months, mm -hmm. and I was vegetarian for two years. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I lost a lot of weight, and my head was bigger, my body was smaller. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, for me, it was, it's just, it was just really hard because you have to cook. You have to make right. Time. You got to know how to cook. And you got to know yeah. what meals to make. You can't just be like, "Oh, I'm going to have some potatoes and vegetables." It's you know a lot of I mean? it's a lot of fast food mamas out there that don't know how to cook. Yeah. You know that's I know going one girl, to... she's like, "I had a big bowl of pasta, no meat." Like, um look, <laughs> who do you think you lost weight? Like you just ate a whole bowl, bowl of pasta. You should have ate the pasta. You should have had everything else that she would have put in that pasta right. except the pasta All the itself. Right. and stuff. So it is. It is pretty hard being both. An, you got. You got to be a student of it. You have to you know? eat like one. Yeah, it's you like, have to eat like one. You can't just say you're that and then turn around and just you know resort to yeah. you know carbs. You got to know the rules. You got to yeah. know the rules yeah. of what you're doing. And, yeah. I, and it's not yeah. even just for the sake of saying you know I'm a pescatarian because I, but literally, like, if you don't eat the right foods, like you were talking about just eating cookies for breakfast, for example. Yeah. Like you need complex carbohydrates sometimes. You can't yeah. just eat cookies or yeah. whatever you know sometimes you need simple you know um, foods but a lot of times we're eating processed foods over and over yeah. like you gotta understand what people are doing to the food before they're giving it to you you right. feel me because then uh you know what you're taking in yeah. but if you learned out learn what pasteurization is decide if you want your food pasteurized first or you want it in this organic state or not at all they said you anything that me? hit the that hits the microwave is bad I, I know think about I've it. known people who don't have microwaves anymore yeah. because of that, and they they you know cook their stuff or they bake it right you know with the oven so and I mean the microwave is ideal for leftovers so really if you cook enough for yourself and whomever you got right around you mm -hmm. you don't really need a microwave all like that right you know right, it's right. for convenience and I think in the eighties when people were trying to um, you know, expedite things you know the microwave gets introduced to the families and and for you know. Um, homemakers that was a relief it's a new appliance you yeah, know so right. it's meant to serve you know imagine how much the vacuum helped you know what i'm saying yeah, <laughs> like exactly, there's another way exactly. but this thing right here so and then they created you know. entree dinners so it's like it all <laughs> right the whole other, industry like, came out of that yeah, device yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. it's not healthy for you yeah yeah no that makes sense you know what about you diamond you be using the microwave or what oh <laughs> no i kind of don't have a microwave I only use it when the children are around because, okay. you know, they can use it. Help facilitate. Yeah, you know, they don't have to be on the stove. <laughs> but right, I don't right. usually use the microwave. Use the oven or you just cook on the stove? Yeah, on the stove. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. But sometimes it's hard, like, when you're on the go, it's like, let me just put this hot pocket in real quick. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, shoot, you better than me because if you talk about it on the go, I'm at like McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Taco Bell. <laughs> hey, McDonald's got some good breakfast sandwiches. Like, don't don't go to McDonald's. That McGriddle. Like, don't go to McDonald's. People always say don't go to McDonald's. She said McGriddle. Yeah, just, the one oh, with, yeah. the, <laughs> with the syrup cooked into the biscuit. Yes. That is good. 
You go right ahead. And the sausage egg McMuffin. You know how processed that is? It's so good. It's so good. Hey, you still look at the calories. It still say 300 <laughs> calories. I'm like, cool. Oh, this is it. Once you introduce the sugar molecule, it's bad business. Just friends, know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, we got to eat a quick on the go. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Exactly. It is. It is. It is. But, you know, and, and by the same token, you start out on the wrong foot with just cookies and milk or whatever. You right. might, like, the way you get hungry later is going to change. You know, if you don't have a protein in the morning, you're going to have trouble by lunchtime. Mm. And you're okay with that. But, like, if you're going to skip a meal and then you have a breakfast with no protein, it's, you know, it's going to be a tough day. Right, right, right. I feel you. Yeah. But yeah, we just... Well, I need to do some more research on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I can maintain, you know. <laughs> so our uh, last thing I wanted to get into is the holidays. The holidays. What are you doing for the holidays? I'm releasing music. I'm My, my whole thing is to just keep grinding out. Uh, well, tell us about your music. These holidays like, are happening in one day. And then, you know, you was back to whatever you was doing before. Right. So yeah. I'm trying to make sure I'm not, you know, falling off where I'm comfortable like you said picking out you go go to sleep you know what i'm saying i'm still mixing with doing everything else i gotta do mm-hmm. um so i put out a song today uh, snow bunnies in blackface and um r&b or hip-hop no nah, it's, it's more spoken word I, i'm a spoken word oh, artist okay. but mm-hmm. um you know it's it's in a rap style you know what i mean but uh it, it's you know dealing with uh, interracial relationships and and mm-hmm. the sort of toxic nature of uh women's influence uh, Are you in especially on black men no okay i mean you know for all intent and purposes we're all interracial sure. but yes but uh, i think specifically when you have uh, people from a dominant culture trying to push you know uh, other people and subjugate them you know to be in a certain way behave in a certain way act in a certain way not doing stuff that's you know kind of in their nature stuff like that uh, it becomes toxic and uh i just took a look at that gotcha. in the uh in the piece and uh you know, it's real interesting. Nice. And so, so that's so it's an actual recording that you made mm-hmm, that you mm-hmm, released. Mm-hmm. Is it on Spotify? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on uh, all the the um, streaming services. Um, and uh, it's I think it's interesting. I'm gonna be working on a video for it soon. Um, I, I did a, a sort of a test run of it in uh, one of the you know Facebook forums. I'm in a group, and so I introduced the topic and uh, just to see you know how people reacted and responded to it and mm-hmm. uh yeah i got just like 400 comments in five hours so i was oh, like wow. y'all want to talk sick. about this some so yeah, yeah, you know yeah. uh i saw it was opportunity so um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna push that mm-hmm. so um me yeah, and i, I got what some more projects so fetty yeti fetty yeti is the artist so um <clears throat> the uh the major thing for me is just kind of it's continuing to gear up you know we got uh valentine's day coming i'm working on a um erotic album for that and uh the singles that I'm putting out now are for a uh, compilation that I'm trying to finish up before that. So are you getting um, like real been working on it for a minute. It, yeah, steamy, yeah. Time. I don't know how steamy it is. Voice. It's, Hello. Hi. I got some different tones, yeah. yeah. Um, Can I go but, down? Uh, or do you want it from the back? <laughs> <laughs> So that's a different topic. Your man asked for permission to go down. No, I'm not. Oh, I, you, you said I, you introduced it, so I'm just following up. You know, so, I don't know. No, I just you know that that's he I don't know. That, that was troubling to me. I was like, hey, wait a minute, he's asking permission. I don't know if you remember Eddie Murphy. Uh, in that movie, I can't remember. Uh, I think the one with Robin Gibbons. He was talking oh, about she's like, yeah, 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 yeah Hump yeah. left, hump right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Giving directions. So yeah, as shit, soon as yeah. you said that, was the first thing I thought was, ooh. I'll say. <laughs> well, I'm a diva. That's what I'm saying. That's why I ask because I figure, you know, a lot of times the control is established by the spike in the heel. So you feel me? You... Well said. Well Sorry. said. Okay. Diamond, what are you doing for the holidays? Eating, seeing my family. Oh. And more eating. And more eating. Yeah. And it goes nowhere. Oh, it's going somewhere. <laughs> Diamond working it off. I don't know how she working it off. <laughs> right? like, I don't even know how. She's keeping a secret on the under. Just... I don't even know, y'all. Mm, I mm. guess I walk every day. Mm. Yeah. For more than 30 minutes. Um, that's, that's the way. <laughs> I can only do 30 minutes, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. This Judge Judy episode was exciting. It was funny. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's cool. So, do you guys have a Christmas tree set up? Like you mentioned, yeah. you have a family, so yeah. you guys are yeah, doing the family Christmas thing. Christmas tree is set up. We got a little train going around the tree, all the little, oh, you know, boosty cute. stuff, candy and stuff available yeah, for our guests. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we get to the holidays, um, but you know, it's it's more for the kids, and we know, you know, so. So I'm assuming you're ordering presents off uh, online rather than going in person to stores. We're thinking about it. So I'm supposed to admit that I'm breaking cover for you to go to the store to <laughs> shop for Christmas yeah, presents. Yeah. I mean, I'm just asking. People want to know. Like, I go shopping. I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, I, Amazon, I order stuff. Nothing. I order stuff offline too. Um, I order from Macy's, Amazon, wherever they're selling it. But yeah. um, if it's open, I'm going to the store. So are you wearing a mask? When I go to the store, uh-huh. I'm wearing a whole disguise. I, you know, oh, my hat comes down to here. Too. Got my oh, mask well, you know, on. He said he, he I wear my on. shades. Yeah, I'm he not said approachable. He don't wear the mask. He no, I'm, not, I'm not approachable. Mm. I don't. I don't put myself out there. And so again, I maintain the distance. Uh, it was a dude at. Um, what was we at? I think it was at Walmart. Getting some headphones, and, and the dude was right here, and, and I was like, excuse me, you got to back up, you know, six feet. Yeah. And he said, oh, this is six feet. I said, well, I'm supposed to be standing over here, and you're supposed to be over there. And he looked, then he looked behind him, and was like, oh, 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 okay, my bad, my bad. But, you know, I always, you know, I like the little visual aid because it keeps you from having to explain what six feet is because, yeah. you know, six feet may be different depending on where you're from. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to regulate mine. You know, you, yeah. you figure out what you're going to do. But, yeah. again, um, like I said, I got on a full disguise, my mask, glasses, hats, whole get down. So, yeah. My mom has goggles. Do you yeah. wear goggles, No, too? I don't wear, I got a partner that wears <laughs> shield and all. I don't yeah, do, yeah. I don't shield. do the shield. I got a shield. I don't wear it, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. A little bit more than what I need. Because, again, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be at a distance. So, yeah, yeah. I don't need all of that. I'm but not they got. Now have you all. seen the full headgear they got now? I saw Tony Braxton had that on 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 her show. She had on like it was like an astronaut suit. Yeah. So like a, um people were. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Beekeepers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she had on the whole suit. You getting one of those? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm putting. What on. I'm wearing now? Shit. Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna put one on layaway. I know they Elon Musk is gonna have a a, a version. You yeah. know what I mean. A, Purify the air and, mm-hmm. and you understand me. Mm-hmm. Get you feeling like you want to up in there. Right, so, I mean, right, I'm right. trying to. I'm trying to get that right one. I don't want to just get anyone. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they're trying to get us ready to go to Mars? You're not ready to go to Mars. Oh, I ain't got no problem. But I'm just trying to figure out if us having to wear these masks and this. I don't think I don't vaccine. think I don't think if, that if that whole Mars like, experience is for people like us. Put a mask on, get ready to have a helmet on while you're on Mars. That's a good like, point. Type of thing. That's a really good. I point. don't think that that experience is for people like us. Like you know. Like what they, do you mean, like us? They, they're not thinking about what we would enjoy and saying, yeah, let's create a link to Mars. You could put a colony on Mars mm-hmm. so that Diamond and... and, and <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like yeah, they're, you're getting they're not, the No, thing. but I'm saying the diamonds of the world, <laughs> okay. you know, they're not planning to take us. You feel me? Like they're, us, like who? Us, like as in black people? Yeah, or us like as in people in Oakland? When I say, or us, like... <laughs> when I, <laughs> when I say us, and then we're, we're talking about them... We're not taking people in Oakland, them, but anywhere else is fine. They're not taking us. They're, not taking <laughs> us. they're, they're not taking black people. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm saying us, and I don't know that they're not taking any black person. They got okay. black people working on the vaccine, like the man said. So okay. they said uh, there was a black woman who created the vaccine. Yeah, they said that. They're gonna say a bunch of things. I also saw a German lady on there taking credit for it. So mm, you know, you think about it. Would there would it be more likely for a German scientist to create a vaccine or some other medicinal warfare or a black lady? Mm-hmm. I think the black lady had some effect, but. I think the the real diabolical sense of what was going on inside the coronavirus came from the white woman. Mm, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Mm. So and you feel like Mars? that? Why? Well, why couldn't the black lady? Did you go to school woman? in California? Oh, I did. Did y'all study the Holocaust? Yeah, we did. Did you see? Okay, so my birthday is four twenty. Oh. I love Hitler. <laughs> so, so let's go changed. back. That <laughs> changed. So, like, wh- why did you see say that? Why couldn't the black lady... I didn't say she could. I'm saying that if she did, they wouldn't be pushing it out there to tell you. You don't think you so? You feel me? Well, just because of historically, I think, when they, they push uh, black scientists to the back. That was the thing. We, we discussed that before you came. We were talking oh, some sorry. about that. And um, how, you know, people have been subjugated, ideas stolen, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, you think about it. If she did, if this was her idea, you know, 
Kizzy, as they call her. Okay. So Kizzy comes up with the vaccine for. It's already sound like some slave shit, don't it? Uh, Kizzy <laughs> well, comes up with the vaccine. I'm. I, look. Who gave her the name Kizzy? <laughs> um, Anthony Fauci oh, referred to her as Kizzy. When I read the article, her name is Kizmikia or something like that. But they call her Kizzy She's because African, it's too much to say Kizmikia or what have you. So, I mean, hey, the respect is... Is, is that Amistad? We'll she said, is that Amistad? Amistad. Was nah, it but Kizzy from I believe, I believe, I believe was it was. I think, yeah. 12 years of slave. She said 12 days of slave shit. <laughs> we wish it was only 12 days. <laughs> you can do 12 days. <laughs> Um, but 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 that's the thing. So you know, with with the way that black scientists have been treated, and the way like you think about George Washington Carver, all of his inventions, he didn't get credit for all those things that he created. Somebody else, somebody else took credit for you know bringing it to market, so to speak. Right. And so what winds up happening is generally, if you know they got the idea from the black scientists, you wouldn't know that. Why would they tell you that so that you would take the vaccine? But they're not saying, oh, yeah, you know, black girls get into STEM careers because you could d develop the new coronavirus vaccine or the next COVID vaccine. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so they're not using it as a uh, jump off to get you into science. They're using it as a jump off to get the shit in your arm. You right. feel me? Yeah. So yeah. it's just you got to really look at how how it's being uh, presented to you when they're saying, you know, Dr. Kizmikia and then calling her Kizzy. It's like, well, isn't it hella disrespectful to call me by my nickname? And I have a PhD. Like, you feel me? So, yeah. like, I, you know, I have an MA in my name, but I put it there because that's right. the fuck I earned. If right. you earned something less and you put whatever it is you got. But if you start calling me bruh, like, well, hold on. Right. That's, that's <laughs> what I worked <laughs> Master bruh to your ass. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So that's the thing. So Dr. Kizzy, you feel me? Whatever. Anyway, um, they're not going to push her out, promote her getting you into it. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, like I said, they got their agenda. So you feel me? That's why I said that. Because um, until they found out that there was some reluctance for black people to take the vaccine, they didn't see the need for that story. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they're like, well, how do we get people, how do we promote safety and all that? They putting uh, Mike Pence up there and giving him the shot. Like, you know, I don't care what you do to Mike Pence. You feel me? <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And Mike Pence don't care what you do to me. That's so true. if they got a government batch of vaccine that's 95 percent effective and we get the 85, then you feel me? Mm -hmm. You can't control that. So, you know, yeah, I don't I don't think that they have a favorable opinion um, of us black people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want to be specific. Um, <laughs> so are they still sending us to Mars or what? Oh, I don't know. If yeah, I was she, her invitation is late. It ain't get there yet. It's, you feel me? She <laughs> <laughs> got lost in the mail. They canceled the mail. Damn. So you didn't get it. But, I mean, you feel but me? they were preparing me by having me wear this mask for whenever they're going to send me that invitation. If so you go, be an alien that's gonna come down and snatch I, you up. Like that's what I don't look, know. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell I didn't you even go thing, deep into this thought. Look, I just was. It just came to me, and I wanted to ask him that question. Pete, <laughs> Pete, just his, historically, uh, just based on history alone, uh, Australia was started as a colony of, of ex prisoners. You know, oh. they sent them there because it was prison overcrowded in Europe. I got Europe, too yeah, yeah. serious, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You think they're sending a healthy, happy, brilliant young black lady? To Mars. I don't nah. know who they're sending to Mars. They're gonna send the prisoners in case it's oh. something there. Oh, it's like, oh okay. <laughs> That's their mentality. Because I'm like, That's I have no mentality. idea who they're sending. I think, I think, I think they'll, they... they'll probably send some people to be in charge, but That's you know, actually, smart. you gotta think about that though. What's send smart? Some, send some prisoners to Mars. I mean, you, you need you need volunteers. You feel me? I don't know why they're not pushing the uh, the vaccine harder with the prison population. Like they. That's crazy. I never thought mm -hmm. about that. Because they have nothing to lose, is what you're saying. So well, It's not just that, but you oh. got to also think about, you know, the people who are treated the worst in society, you know. And, and yeah. then, like, how are we, who are we as a society if we have people who we prefer to save first and then we have people who are okay to die next? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about that. Like, they're giving us permission by not giving us a what they're calling a miracle drug, uh, a miracle drug, life-saving vaccine. They're not giving it to us. So whose life is it saving? It's saving the lives of the privileged until it falls to you. You feel right. me? And when yeah. it falls to you, then you go on to Mars. But yeah. until then, you feel me? You got to wait on your invitation, well, like I said. <laughs> yes, take me there. Yeah, right. That's how you got to look at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Okay. Would you go back to Africa? Yeah. No, I mean permanently. 
Um, yes. However, Where? what I did here in South Africa, Gotta do research. there's, um, God damn it, what is it, 12 million white people that live there now in South Africa? Mm-hmm. Like, they took over the whole South Africa. I could be wrong with the number, but it's, they dominated Africa. Wow. Okay. No, I'm sorry, South Africa. Well, South, South Africa. Africa has always kind of been more um, colonized. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. I'm trying to figure out if you're talking about recently or a long time ago. No, maybe, maybe you're something I read. Maybe recently. you're saying like the numbers decrease. Maybe. Well, they had a revolution uprising there, and mm-hmm. so they pushed a lot of the Afrikaners out. So now they're back to 12 million. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Significant number. I don't know that that's uh, organic. You know what I'm saying? Right. They right, might have right. been bust in. Like they tend to, and not saying I wouldn't go to South Africa. South Africa is beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I mean you know. But if people we have that conversation, yeah, there, that Pan African conversation has been ongoing. Right. But if want to go the dynamics there to have changed. Try to, you know what I mean? Isolate themselves or whatever from yeah. everything yeah. else. Dave Chappelle like, worked for Dave Chappelle. If it worked for Dave Chappelle, he was in South Africa. Yeah, he dipped. <laughs> I, I know that, but I know South Africa. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like in West Africa or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, From what wow. I understood, he was in South Africa. Really? But any okay, yeah. any Africa work if you know it's not colonized and and made to work against you, you know what I mean? Right, so, right. Like you know. what they're saying about South Africa right now. Yeah. yeah. But it's I mean even in other countries, there's other forms of violence happening, and and then America's I guess approach to world policing, you know, and and sending soldiers and withdrawing soldiers and troops and all that. Like, that's arbitrary. It's upsetting. You know, I think to some extent, some of those people's society. So, you know, on a certain level, um, it's not safe for black people in Africa because of the white man. I mean, it's, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, is mm-hmm. that? Wow. Really? Right. You feel me? Because you think about it, that's what the competition is for. And, and the people are competing to serve, you know, the interests of mm-hmm. the people with money. Who has the money there? Right. You know, right, who's right, bringing right. in, you yeah. know, the money there. Yeah. So, that makes you know, sense. Different dynamics, different countries. It's not like that everywhere, but yeah, in sure. a lot of places, you got black folks trying to perform and, and dance for, mm-hmm. you know, for white folks and for money and stuff. And that's kind of what I take the task in uh, mm-hmm. Snow Bunnies and Blackface. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I still want to go to South Africa just because, you know, I, I've never been to Africa. And if that's the first place to start, let's go. But I heard uh, actually the Ivory Coast, Ivy? Ivory. Ivory. Ivory Coast. Mm-hmm. I heard it's beautiful out there. Yeah, it's beautiful a lot of places. I just think that for some people trying to control, you know, mm-hmm. who gets to have access to that beauty. Yeah. You know, because at a certain point, like, you know, we weren't welcome in Oakland, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm from Oakland. I walked this whole city, and, you know, it's hard to. It's a whole different dynamic feel like, now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they looking at you like, can we help you? There's people from, from, <laughs> from, from, from elsewhere. Saying you know well, you know we we can't Trans- do that plan. you can't do that and you know I was surprised even hearing like the Karen lady down uh downtown about the cookout I think it was cookout Karen yeah 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 who I was, was uh to... was talking about I had you know, dude on cookouts. my previous show yeah who yeah. was the one who the, was involved that she was in that to? yeah almost thirty years ago I think uh they were having a festival at the lake and you know people coming into a community where there's culture already established trying to establish culture you know. And that's, you know, that's, that's egotistical. So, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, get with the movement. And I think that uh, Oakland wasn't given that. Where It was like the culture was devalued because people felt like they were coming to experience the diversity. Right, but right, they right. didn't allow the diversity to continue to exist yeah. because so many people. It's like you go to a concert, like, you know, and you're the artist and you get there and the stadium's empty. It feels like you own the place. You can control. You love it. You love the feeling. You inhale it and then breathe and become a part of it. And then, you know, 20,000 people hopefully come in the door and, you know, and it's not yours no more. It's like, mm-hmm. damn, now there's all of them. And, you know, you got to shrink back some and kind of figure out how do you balance that out to push out yeah. your art and in a confident way when you got all this pressure. You feel mm-hmm. me? And so that's the thing. Like, you just walking down the street. I remember I was on the block one day and I seen a white lady go to the store and she just walked in. Hey, fellas! Like <laughs> you didn't grow up with us, right? You're right. supposed to be over here, right? But hey, you know, fellas. <laughs> but that they, they're that casual. You yeah. feel me? They move right in next to you, start bringing they, they stuff and stuff and do their thing, and replacing the culture. And then you know, mm-hmm. they pack all the events you can't get in. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. 
It's like that. But that happened to our city. It happened in Chicago. It happened in Atlanta. It happened yeah, in happening d- everywhere. Dallas. Different cities, you know, and that uh, gentrification is, is real. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's sudden, yeah. but it's real. And it's happening so much. Um, you know, we, we're losing our inner city cultures. You know, people, it's funny for me to see somebody with L.A. hat on. And I'm like, which L.A.? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, old L.A. or the new right. L.A.? Right. You know, we got on the San Francisco hat. And it's like, San Francisco Giants or Gigantes? Which one are you, <laughs> which one are you down with? You no. Know? <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, yeah, we see. Yeah. We see what's up. So. Yeah. Just we all just gotta now that we have what Biden in office and he getting there quite Kamala. an office, but he, yeah, yeah, he won the presidency and uh, somebody uh, Donald Trump lost, so you know he's somebody said the, the greatest the loser. <laughs> we'll see. They said they bring know. like the Navy SEALs out or something if he don't get out. That's like. not that, that's not how they do that. I'm sure it's not gonna be the Navy <laughs> SEALs. Like they <laughs> they got other teams. I mean the Coast Guard or the National Guard, or whatever. That's okay. that's close enough to we can get you out the White House. They don't need the Navy SEALs for Trump. Yeah, yeah. Well, he still hasn't admitted that he lost unless he uses the army against the people, which is different. But I. Hey, it's Trump. It's Trump. You never know. He <laughs> right, and that's what I'm saying. Is, you feel me? That's why I said that because that's Trump. You never yeah. know. You know, but we gotta be careful. Wait, you know, he uh, he sent his agents out. You feel me? It's gonna be a knock on and the he's door. He's about to pardon a lot of people. Hey, I think he's about to pardon that one dude who shot um, the Kenosha uh, shooter dude. Uh, the, where he the, shot the, the, the two. Yeah. Where he he skipped mm-hmm. states and he went to mm-hmm. go shoot mm-hmm. uh, a couple liberal. People. Yeah, that was Kenosha. Yeah, I have a feeling he's gonna like pardon people like him. Cause it's like, fuck you, he gonna fuck pardon, you, America. He you guys didn't vote for me again. Let me release the wolves on you and let people like him loose. Hey, the wolves were released when he took over the White House. So you know, <laughs> you seen yeah. Obama getting on the plane, and that was the last of the, you know, the the the, the wholesome people in Washington. Mm. Um, you so start wait, you, you think Obama stuff. did something for us? What do you mean, us? Black, <laughs> black people. people. Black people. <laughs> Did Obama do something for black people? I think he did some things that affected black people. I don't think he did something that said we're going to do this for black people. He threw a lot of black people parties. You what know, about reparations? Why do I think he I mean, like, did reparations or do I think about it? Was that ever addressed to Obama or was it more addressed to Trump and Biden now because they were... You know, I gave Obama credit because he was such a smart person. I felt like he could have thought up reparations on his own. Like you don't have to get a congressman to tell you we need reparations. So just like uh, Trump <laughs> feels like he introduced the executive order, I never heard the word executive order more than when he was in office. So, um, you know, when it, you feel me? Yeah. Uh, if Biden, I mean, uh, Obama had done a, a – how, how much would you have won it? Say you, if you just said, okay, you give black people blank dollars. They said something like $350,000 no, 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 no. How much person? would you have wanted? Like just for them to as a package deal, you know they like the bailout was seven hundred million in uh, '08. Then they just did the one point two trillion for COVID. Like how much right. would you want for black people? Um. Okay. I'll, I'll be fair. A hundred thousand. No, 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 no. How much would you want the total package to be? Like how oh. much? How much of America's wealth would you want today? Oh, I don't know. As much as possible would would be a reasonable amount. <laughs> I don't know. I would think $3 trillion. Okay. Just like, yeah. you know, just as much as possible. to put a number on it. Yeah. Um, but no, just to make sure you got everybody covered. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you got to think about, you know, people are, are going back and forth about the number of people who are enslaved. And that's not well, then you how that works. Well, a lot of people come up and be like, oh, my grandpa nah, was half right, so and so. And here's your <laughs> issue. It should be that simple. <laughs> yeah, that's simple. You know, simple. because um, you got to think about it. Like, if somebody does something to you, and you you have five kids. Your five kids have to grow up without you. We have to worry about all five of those kids. Surviving so on, it needs yeah. to be a concern for all the people who have survived yeah. the people who participated in slavery and yeah. as, as victims who were victimized. Yeah. So, you no, know, that's true. that means all the offspring, and that is what elevates the number. You feel mm-hmm. me? Because it's like... Well, how long are you going to keep going? Right. No, no, no. Actually, the one-time payment. I mean, if somebody, like you said, you want $100,000, if they gave you $162,000, 492, uh, $165,492.23, you would take that and be like, shit, you ain't got to hear from them people. Yeah. Give yeah. me my issue. What I'm trying to tell you I'm is when you say shit, when you say 40 like acres and a mule, what, yeah. what country, what territory in America, and then, you know, what type of mule? And then we decide a number for that. How much yeah. does 40 acres cost? Right, right. Tear us off. 
Yeah. It's not difficult. You, so, so how do you feel about Biden not acknowledging that or Kamala? Not acknowledging what? Reparations. I mean, you don't walk in saying we're going to have reparations. Well, just no, like. <laughs> there's people that have addressed that to them. And well, I mean, sure, I, I don't want to talk about that. If I was, no. look, if you give me control of the entire country, I am not going to be talking about reparations as a first order of business. I can put it on the agenda. We're going to get to it. We're going to table it till next time. But, yeah. you know, we're going to have it. It's going to be in the periphery somewhere. Yeah. What I'm not going to do is walk in saying we're running on the reparations platform. As in, you know, right. no, I we're guaranteed that. Yeah. 40 million votes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so many black people in America. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so they ain't going to, they're not going to give, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that airtime yet. But right. I thought, I thought that second term Obama, like year six, I started looking like, all right. <laughs> it's your second term. You, 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 you didn't had your midterm elections for your senators, cool dude, you know? bro. We got we got two years to make something happen. But they had already Slang lost words with people and everything. They had lost you know? the senate. He had his pimp walk back. Yeah. They had lost the senate by then, so it was like you know we're not gonna be able to do everything we want to. The first two years he was there though, he could do anything he wanted to do, and they would have to live with it. And my thing is, if you sign an executive order and then they kill you, well. We got our reparations, bro, and you already a hero. You already, let Obama <laughs> is Obama is gonna die a hero already. You would only have elevated yourself as D man. He would have been like they'd have had to put him on the quarter. Right, like you right, feel right. me? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. serious yeah. because yeah. at the end of the day, when this is what is he the 44th president? So all those other presidents before could not have figured it out and then you got one dude who came through for the people like you feel me and he was black like that was the perfect story that was and then to be the story. and <laughs> then we deserve trump i don't give a fuck you give right. me my, you be my like look i'm living off a hundred thousand a whole like, year's worth well, of salary <laughs> but here's the thing now we gonna also have some financial literacy classes before you get this money because <laughs> you just said living off the hundred thousand and we need to invest that hundred thousand so that we can have our piece community. of the pie because if you had forty acres acres you couldn't go spend that on Gucci shoes you can't spend your trade your mule for no Balenciaga jacket so you feel me um, you gotta have some some financial literacy around that just to make sure that people aren't you know because at the end of the day three trillion dollars will all be going back to who. You right, feel right, me? Right, because yeah. uh, we don't have a Fendi store. I'm not buying no goddamn Yeezys. You know what I'm saying? No, I, no I ain't buying no big baller brands. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just a few. St I'm just saying that to say that our brands don't have the same value yet. Right, right, so right. you're not thinking, let me rush to get those big baller same brands. It's, well, I mean, beyond that, it's not polo. It's what it's not. Okay. It's not, it's, you okay. feel me? Right. It's not because cause at the end of the day, you know, you feel me, next year's polo fall line is going to be clean. Mm -hmm. You already know there's going to be a next year's polo, polo fall line. You see what I'm saying? How much we, we're still wondering if uh, the black businesses are going to be in operation in six months. Is COVID mm -hmm. going to be the, the reason they went out of business? Is it going to be some other off, offshoot? So, right. you know, I think about that. So. Uh, I would definitely want to have some limits. Like you have to spend 60% on a housing and dwelling unit of some sort or something. Like you feel me? Even if you pull the equity back out, you got a house now. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, would, I would love to see reparations done the right way. But um, I also think that there would there should be like a, a 20 percent you know you can just fuck off that money like you know because so black people in. black people i think every black person in america today deserves a twenty five thousand dollars shopping spree on america you feel me just because um Imagine what would happen. <laughs> for, all the, for all intent and purposes you Imagine know uh happened. everybody else done spent off our backs mm -hmm. you feel me and we yeah. ain't we ain't spent period so like you feel me to that in some kind of way i was saying I would say, and, and, and still more to, again, invest in our housing, education, whatever else, too. Sure. Um, it shouldn't be a thing where we're banned from, you know, getting that Balenciaga, Balenciaga jacket, if that's what you, you know, your heart desire. But at the same time, um, <coughs> you can't just have it be a requirement, you know, that you spend it a certain way. So there should be some limitations and regulations, but, like, they can make it a combination, you know, give me a guaranteed loan. Mm -hmm. Every black person that can prove fifty thousand uh, dollars income guaranteed loan for their house, you know, up to a certain amount of money. Um, shoot, why not? There's ways to do it, but you gotta want to loan consolidation. You gotta want to do it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a bunch of different kinds of programs. We ain't got shit. Yeah. We ain't got nothing. We don't get ten percent off like veterans. Nothing. 
So that's what I'm saying. Like, you feel me? Uh, it's long since time yeah. for us to have had some type of solutions. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, it, you don't got to cash me out. I, I, I prefer that. You don't have to. Um, but if it's all discounts and we got to carry our black card to get all our black benefits, shit, you can't have had 450 years of this shit and then, you know, be looking at somebody for credit. Like, hey, right, uh, right, right. trust me, you know I'm a good guy. You know, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's a game invented uh, to hold us down, keep us out of the process as opposed to, you know, mm-hmm. include us. And so that's our only resort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. You feel me? So it's been time for rep- reparations. And uh, I don't blame Obama for not doing it. Um, you know, anybody could be a martyr, you feel yeah, me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to some extent, I guess. Um, maybe he had a bigger purpose or something. But I think the majority of, of people thought that he was going to put together some kind of package, you know. Even if yeah. it was, like I said before, you know, incentive-based or something like that. Something. You know, just something. Something. Show me you see me. Don't just right. keep calling out green to the goddamn White House and then say we good. <laughs> but do you think that that would be enough if what? they got something, the $3 trillion, or if it was the essential well, shopping? Well, the one thing that would be able to be said that ain't been able to be said by now is we took care of you. Okay. You feel me? Because mm-hmm. the uh, Japanese people that were in the internment camps, I believe, got their issue. You feel me? So, mm. you know, they got reasons for, for why we're not the ones getting those benefits. You feel me? So um, whatever, you know, their prejudices are or whatever, hopefully uh, Biden and Harris can can do some work toward that. Um, looking at his cabinet picks, um, I feel like he's setting her up for alley-oop. And uh, I, I really, really appreciate uh, Mr. Biden for that. <laughs> <laughs> And I think Biden, he's, he's going to do something, and we just all got to be patient and wait and not be so judgmental. People have been saying they're going to do something. I want somebody to do something specific. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know what it is, and then I want to see it come into fruition and then, you know, come to pass so that it's, you know, not just what they were saying. Because, yeah. you know, um, everybody said, you know, mm-hmm. this is change we can trust. Mm-hmm. I still don't trust the change I got. So, you know, yeah, that's it's bottom line. All right, y'all. Well, I hate to say goodbye, oh. but I felt we had fun. Ain't that right? For sure. Fatty Yeti? For sure. <laughs> All right, y'all. Keller Music here. Diva Talk tonight. Uh, Fetty, any last words you would like to say? Yeah, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Fetty Yeti, F-E-T-T-I-Y-E-T-I. Um, and the music, again, is streaming on all platforms. And the Buna Complex, the guide to the male clitoris, is also available on all ebook platforms. And all your favorite porn sites. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what? I told you that might happen. I didn't oh. think about that. Well, yeah. Another outlet. In the exotic Maybe I don't. Stories. I don't know. I'm, I'm, another revenue stream. Nah, straight. it's, not, it's not, uh, not even on that level, but, but it you know, be there, as an enhancement. You feel me? So. There's men that read those things. If it's we'll for see what's men up. to yeah. learn how to. Diamond, any last words, darling? Do your research. <laughs> Do your research. <laughs> All right, y'all. Cut it up, music. Mesa Tableist. Thank you for hosting Diva Talk tonight you. with your girl, Kelda Music. Peace out. Peace.